know, we're talking about promoters, we're talking about DJs, we're yeah. talking about producers, bookers, we're talking about people that are actually in the scene and have been for quite a while. Yes. And the stories that they create, uh, they are so interesting and they are so full of soul. Mm -hmm. uh, and I feel like that's what the community is all about, you know, and that's why we created Behind the Decks. That's exactly it. Hello and welcome to Behind the Decks with Sus and So. I am So Saudaji and here is my dear friend Susana. Hi, what's up? And we are having this little chat between or amongst ourselves so that we tell you a little bit about ourselves, about the way we started with music and basically also the way we decided to team up and create this amazing project yeah, that, that is Behind the Decks. Yes, that's exactly right. We're just going to give you a little bit of insight in who are we and who are we that we think that we can do this <laughs> fucking podcast, right? Yeah. So, so, uh, so let's start. Yes. Let's start way back when you were a little so. <laughs> a little so, yes. <laughs> a little yeah. so. Um, well, so I started uh, being a DJ after, after being a professional soccer player. I, I lived in the United States and uh, I was taught by a Brazilian friend uh, from Sao Paulo and that was like the first time that I actually grabbed a couple of decks and I started, you know, getting introduced to the electronic music sound. I, I, I really, before that, I haven't uh, at all. You I, told me I, that. I didn't even know about electronic music. So I, how, what, what was your first... <laughs> How did you get to know it? Like you were at a yeah. party or a friend played it? Because I, I yeah. can't imagine, like I'm from Amsterdam. Right. I cannot imagine not knowing electronic music. So how, well, I was, what kind of world opens? I, I, I was a lot of in, into, into, into just uh, regional music uh, from different parts of the world. So I would listen to uh, Bossa Nova, or, uh, for example, my, my sister danced flamenco and my mother as well and my grandmother as well. Wow. So I had a big influence from that. Yeah. And then, uh, and then a lot of classical music. And my dad, he's so in love with Cuban music and with Buena Vista Social Club and with Alberto Barros and this, like, this, he was an amazing, uh, trumpet player uh -huh. uh, from Colombia. And so I was, I was brought up in, in that sense, no? Yeah. And then you had like all the, you know, all the regular pop music at the time, you know, like yeah. Street Boys, things like that. Yeah. I literally, it was the way I was raised. So I just wasn't introduced at all no. to electronic music yeah. until it was really funny. I was, I was, I was super depressed because I was giving up on, on, on football. Uh, what, and, uh, what time was that? Like when I was, age? I was 20 years old. Oh, yeah. I was 20 years old and I was giving up on football because I just didn't, I just didn't have, have it in me. Mm -hmm. And I uh, was so depressed and everything, and I was going into my apartment, and I started hearing a beat, and I was like, "What the fuck is this? What what is this? But this is this is nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah, is yeah. nice." So I was like, "So I go into the apartment, and here's my friend, a Brazilian friend from Sao Paulo. His name is Sima, and he's DJing at a little controller from from uh, a mix track controller from uh -huh, Newark, uh -huh, right? Yeah. And I was like, "What? What?" The, what the fuck is this? I, before that, I only knew like you know like like, like the turntables yeah. and a mixer, uh -huh. but I just had like the concept right. of that, yeah. you know. And it was it was super nice, but I just didn't know anything. <laughs> so so he he told me, and then when I came back to Mexico, I decided this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. What? Yeah. <laughs> so it really for you came in a moment, sort of like. It was God an gave you, <laughs> you know, yeah. Deus ex machina. Like yes, here yes, you go. Yes, yes. This is going to save you. Yes. yes. Wow. And it, it, how about you? How was it? How was it for you? Wow. Yeah. Well, I, I, my family is very musical family. My dad is a jazz musician, and he plays uh, the keys, the drums. He does band coaching. So there was always music in my house. And my mother adores disco. I totally have that from my mom. <laughs> You know, like she adores disco. The, so with disco, it's a beat. And then on the other side, you have like the jazz and the improvisation and stuff. So I grew up with that. Mm. And um, and my brother, who is four years older than me, he was from young already producing. Right. Like oh, my he, God. He, I remember he was 14, I think 14 years old. And, and my parents gave him a drum machine. Mm -hmm. 
to make rhythms and stuff right, right, and, right. and 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 with cue bass uh, wow. and, and, and 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 yeah fruity loops and la- and later <laughs> it was reason then and ableton and so my brother was already producing when i was like super small and and that's really i mean thank god <laughs> because that's really how i fell into everything and then yeah that, that is so beautiful i i, I think that in a, in a way uh, you got to where you are because of all the influence of the different people in your life. Yeah. To be honest. And yeah, absolutely. It, it, it does, doesn't it feel like, in a way, you, you give a little bit of a tribute to oh, those people? yes. I mean, to my mom with the <laughs> disco. Like, every time I play a gig where I need to play disco, mm-hmm. uh, I, I just like, Mom, this one is for you. <laughs> this one is for you. You know, like, with the fire and then Michael Jackson and all those things, you know. So, so yeah, I take them with me all the time. And then on the other hand, if I'm playing uh, a little bit more, more like uh, some, some jazzy tracks mm-hmm. or, you know, at the beach with some really cool improvisation, you know, mm-hmm. I think of my dad, like, oh, my dad would love this. Yeah. And then, so yeah, uh, it's for me, it's a whole family affair. Dude, that, that is so amazing. I, I, I love that. In a way, uh, I feel like in a, you're, you're, you're just evolving out of out of these people that just like influence you so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and like after that, it's it's been a long time since you've been like really growing up with your family in the Netherlands, and then coming back to Mexico. How was that story? <laughs> coming back to or, well, or coming to well, Mexico, coming, coming yeah, to Mexico. Yes. Yeah, coming to me. Well, that that's a whole that's a whole story. I mean, I'll, I'll keep it very very short. I was working on a cruise ship as a DJ, came to Mexico for the first time. And I was like, what the fuck? (laughs) You know, there is a vibe here in this country that is different from any country that I've ever been. Mm. And I've traveled a bit. So I was like, I need to go back. Uh And then I came to Guadalajara. Mm -hmm. So I was invited. And uh, geez, man, like in one month I had the first gig and it just started to poop, 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 poop. I've never been received anywhere better than here. You know, and I've lived in different places, so it's been fucking amazing. That is, that is so cool. That is so nice. Yeah, yeah, it's been a, a cool journey. For, yeah, for real. That yeah. is so, 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 so nice. Yeah. In, 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 in what way do you feel like it's different from the Netherlands? Though? <sighs> in, in a lot of ways. In a very subtle ways, as in how the people work in the community in the scene Mm -hmm. but in also very exaggerated ways like how the crowd reacts to the music that you're playing i think where i'm from in amsterdam uh, europe those big cities there's so much electronic music there is so much good fucking music everybody is talented you know and and in amsterdam at some point it drove me mad that it was just like okay so you want to come play right okay how many people are you bringing that's the only thing they asked like they didn't really check if you played well or like but how many people are you bringing and i'm like it's a business it's a fucking business and of course it is a business and i understand but I found it so, where's the soul in that, you know? Right, right. So, and when I came here, it was a totally different story. But but looking back, it was a very good school because it, it did make me, you know, I, I learned some stuff that mm-hmm. I'm using now, of course, organizing my own parties. Yeah. And so that's... Uh, in, in a way, I would say misconception uh, that uh, usually when, when you're starting, you should also bring the people you know it's hard, like, yeah and, and it's really hard because you're Super trying to hard. get your you your trade you're not, you know yeah. you know done and you're, you're trying to to become better and more proficient and you're not and known yet yeah so who are you bringing like the first party you're bringing 10 friends right. next party you're bringing seven because those other three were like i, I know what you play and then the third party is like everybody's like how many times are you gonna you know invite me right. <laughs> so and then they're like i'm gonna stay home drink Chocolate milk, you know, <laughs> it's cold. It's cold in Amsterdam. Yeah. Hot, hot cocoa. So, um, so it's it's hard. So before you have made a community that follows you and comes to your party. But anyway, we'll, we're going to talk about party organizing in another episode. <laughs> yes, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're 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 on a, on, a, on a stage in, in in our careers where where we feel, and, and in the world, it really that a community is very necessary in order to to display what you love, you know, and not only in music and, and it, in any 
sort of arts mm -hmm. uh, display or social display. Uh, community is a big part of, 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 of what we do and what we try to achieve. But don't you feel like, especially for electronic music, yes. it's that community feeling that, that brings us all together? It, it really you know, is. Like you have really your is. favorite parties, you have your favorite genre, yeah. and, and you vibe mm. with each other on that fucking beat, you know? Yeah, and I, I feel in a way that's how it, it started and that's how it's been, and that's how it, it has evolved. In, in a separate post podcast, we've talked about the influence of, of drugs in, in, the, in the making of music. Yeah. You know, we, we've talked also about the different genres of other music that have influenced. New genres of music that yeah. have that have started and, and and it's it's really nice to to understand that there's another crazy weird guy like you <laughs> you know that vibes to the things that you vibe yeah. that uh, dances to the things that you dance to and that you can feel uh, connected even if you don't know the other person yeah and that's, that's sense, what it's all about right yeah. so isn't that also for us to make a little bridge like yeah. why did we start this, yeah. this podcast. Right? Yeah. So, why I came to you <laughs> and I said, so, let's do something. Explain yeah. a little bit how, well, that, how that went. We, we, we met at a coffee shop. Well, we met it before. Well, we, we, we met before. We, yeah. we, we started with a, couple of, uh, with a couple of gigs where she was playing. Then she, she came to a couple of gigs that I, that I was playing. And uh, eventually, uh, we became sort of like Instagram friends, you know. I was happy for all the things that I saw on your Instagram. You were happy for the things that you saw on my Instagram in a way. We kind of chatted and then uh, we come up to this coffee shop. You tell me, hey, I need to do this. I need to do to, to, to do this, this this podcast because I have I have a necessity, yeah. you know, of, of, of showing the community and developing the community and just growing uh, the community in a, in, a, in a way that that uh, I feel like it's not being done. Yeah, exactly. And, and giving info. Yeah. Like background info to the people who are interested in this craft or in the in the in the scene as we mm -hmm. say it right mm -hmm. in the scene here in mm -hmm. Mexico in Guadalajara mm -hmm. and and you are also someone who is really about giving back to the community right yeah so that's where we really met like we want to provide real information from DJs in the city and all around the world uh, like how is it really to tour as a fucking crazy person <laughs> oh, oh, what is it like to be playing for thousands of people do you are you stressed out do you sweat do you have to shit or like <laughs> the real like the real info yeah the real things and, yeah. it, and if you feel lonely how do you deal with the stress how exactly. do you deal with depression as well yeah uh, how do you manage to work your life your regular life yeah as as, as a person and then you your star life as a DJ, yeah, you know, and all those delicate things that when people are starting <laughs> out, yeah, right, they don't know, they and, don't and, know, and uh, not only if you are an aspiring DJ or a DJ that just started or a consumed, you know, a DJ or just a raver, you yeah. know, just a guy who goes to parties and clubs and raves and just wants to have fun and make community and just um, maybe take drugs, maybe uh, know somebody. Maybe just just travel yeah. with the music as an uh, as a as a pre a, a pretext, you know. Yeah, like uh, the consumer and also the executive. Exactly, and the, and you know, we're talking about promoters. We're talking about DJs. We're yeah. talking about producers, bookers. We're talking about people that are actually in the scene and have been for quite a while. Yes, and the stories that they create, uh, they are so interesting and they are so full of soul. Mm -hmm. uh, and I feel like that's what the community is all about, you know, and that's why we created Behind the Decks. That's exactly it. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, in a way, we want to show you who we are, but also what the scene means to us and what the scene can mean to you. Uh, we're super open to have you around. We're super open to have you partying, raving, just being part of the scene because we're in love with it. Yeah. And we want you to be and feel part of it. Yes, as much as you can. Yeah, 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 yeah. for sure. Yeah. And so this is why we created uh, Behind the Decks with Susan Sal uh, and Sal. And uh, it's so nice to have you here. We really, really hope that you enjoy each and every one of the episodes that we put out. Uh, please uh, subscribe to everything that we do. 
uh, and follow us on, on, on social media because we're throwing out some amazing content with some amazing DJs. Yes, uh, from thank you. all over the place. Yes. So And we want to thank Mixmag for supporting us, powering us. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, you know, we're just uh, sharing the love. And uh, yeah, sharing the love for the music and for the, for the scene. So once again, follow us for all the updates that we have on, on our social media. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being part yes. of the electronic music community. Yes, thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Cheers.